Hello and welcome to my next tutorial about Prepomix. This time I will show you how to use the newly implemented compression only support. So let's create a new model first. As always, we will use default units and I will import the geometry. And uh, you'll see that the geometry will be uh, very simple in this case because we'll be analyzing just a cantilever beam uh, to present the capabilities of this uh, feature. So here's the beam, it was just uh, partitioned at the end because we need two extra surfaces, or actually one surface, but the other ones are also helpful. So uh, this was the only change, but, but apart from that, the beam is very simple. Uh, so let's create the mesh first, and uh, I'll prepare the meshing parameters for this beam. So uh, let's uh, select uh, the whole beam, and now I can specify the maximum uh, element size, which will be uh, six millimeters in this case. Uh, and I will also uh, disable second order uh, elements because uh, I will generate hex mesh and uh, linear elements will be sufficient in this case. All right, so uh, let's uh, confirm those settings. And uh, now I will use the newly available extrude mesh feature, uh, which is one of the tools that were implemented along with Gmesh. So uh, this is Gmesh capability built into Propomex and uh, this way you can uh, create extruded uh, hex meshes. Uh, so uh, let's uh, switch to surface angle because uh, if I select just this face, nothing won't hap will happen. Uh, but if I select surface angle, uh, then uh, all surfaces or actually both surfaces will be uh, highlighted and I will be able to create extruded mesh. Uh, this arrow will show me the direction of extrusion. Uh, so that's how this works. Uh, but uh, if I click the preview, uh, you will notice that the mesh will initially consist of uh, triangles. Uh, so this is not what I want here. And uh, if I select the combination algorithm, for example, simple, uh, then uh, you'll see that the mesh actually consists of uh, quads, uh, which will then uh, become uh, hexahedrons. So let's click OK, and now I can just uh, create the mesh. OK, the mesh is created. You can see and that we have nice uh, hexahedral mesh. Uh, for this beam, let's hide it for now because we don't really need it at the moment. And now mm, let's define the uh, rest of, of the analysis features. So uh, let's define the material. Uh, this will be a typical steel material, as in most cases in those tutorials. Uh, so nothing really special here. And uh, I will create a section assigned to the beam. And that's uh, when all when it comes to, to the initial uh, setup. Mm, now I just need to create a step and uh, the constraint that I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the tutorial. tutorial. So mm, let's maybe start with the step and I will create a static step. And now uh, one very important thing is that if you want to use the compression only support that will be discussed in this tutorial, uh, you should uh, enable uh, the geometric linearity. Uh, you should always do that, otherwise the results will be uh, basically not what you expect. So you should always make sure that uh, geometric linearity is enabled. All right, let's confirm this. And now uh, I will apply boundary condition. I just want to fix the uh, uh, the other end of the beam, so this will be cantilever beam. Uh, so that's all when it comes to boundary conditions. Uh, and I also want to apply load. Uh, so let's rotate the beam a bit and uh, I will apply a surface traction load to the end of the beam. Uh, and for now, uh, this will be a uh, force uh, acting in y direction and this will be negative force, so I want to be bend the beam uh, downwards in, in the y axis. So that, that's it when it comes to uh, main uh, setup, but now uh, I also need to add the compression only constraint. Uh, because that's the, the topic of this tutorial. So let's go to constraints and uh, here you can see that we, in addition to the previously available, for example, surface spring constraint, you also have compression only constraint. And this is the, the one that we are going to use. Uh, I will soon tell you how it works, uh, but let's uh, select the um, surface first. So I will apply it uh, right here. That's why I part partitioned the surface. I wanted to create a very small uh, surface so that the spring is, is applied here and uh, I can easily calculate the analytical solution without, um, you know, aff affecting the assumption that this is basically support acting at the point along the beam. Uh, so mm, that's where I apply the compression only support and I just need to uh, define some settings here. Uh, so basically I need to specify spring stiffness because by default uh, it's a very large value. Uh, but in this case I need a quite specific value because I'm going to use the surface, uh, the, the spring stiffness in analytical calculations. So let's define uh, 800 uh, newtons per millimeter. Uh, I will leave the tens tensile force with the default setting. You can see that it's a very low setting for, for the tensile force. Uh, it's on purpose. Mm, uh, and uh, then we have the offset parameter. This is just for visualization aspects because mm, you may want to offset the, uh, the, the compression only uh, 
elements so let me tell you in a second to see what it means uh, you can offset them so that they are basically visible uh, under the, the uh, surface that to which they are applied so in this case let me uh, specify 25 millimeters this should be uh, sufficient and now let's uh, discuss a, a bit uh, how this feature works so basically this is compression only support which means that it only uh, acts in uh, has the stiffness in, in the compression direction uh, so that's a similar way to surface spring, uh, but uh, surface spring, uh, as you know, is a spring that acts in both directions. Uh, so um, uh, it will al also uh, act if I put this beam uh, up, if I pull this beam upwards. And the compression only support acts like something uh, like contact support, you could also call it this way, which means that uh, you can imagine contact with rigid uh, surface here, with rigid plane. And uh, this is basically uh, what this means, that uh, the, the compression only support by default with very large stiffness acts like contact with uh, rigid uh, surface. Uh, so it only resists uh, motion downward, downward motion compression uh, and doesn't do provides no resistance against uh, tension. So basically mm, pulling uh, the, the beam up, for example, from the from the surface just like contact so contact doesn't hold uh, the surfaces unlike tight constraints so so they can separate but uh, provides resistance in compression so that's how the, the compression only uh, support works and internally it uses gap elements mm, so those are very simple contact elements so now you can see uh, why uh, it's uh, so related to contact uh, let's confirm this mm, and now uh, let me run the analysis and you'll see the results Alright, um, the results are available now, so let's open them. And now you can see why we specify this offset, because uh, here you may notice that uh, we have uh, the uh, gap elements, because those are actually gap elements. Uh, they are visible here, uh, thanks to the fact that we use this uh, offset uh, parameter. Uh, but uh, of course it doesn't influence the, the results themselves, the, the parameters just uh, to, to make, make it look better. Alright, so mm, now what I want to check is the deflection of the beam, uh, because uh, as you can imagine, those uh, essentially springs here, because they act like, like springs in this direction, uh, reduce the deflection of, of the beam. Uh, so let's check uh, the displacement, and of course I will compare it with the analytical solution. Uh, here you can see, and th this is the, the simplified uh, model of the beam uh, for the analytical calculations, and here you can see the solution for, um, for the case when there's no spring, so this will be the, the second run. Uh, when I uh, pull the beam upwards and those are the results uh, for the case when there's spring uh, acting here so spring support basically uh, so we can see that we are expecting this uh, kind of uh, deflection so if we go back uh, we can see that the deflection is quite close to what we are expecting here of course we could also uh, request uh, output for, for a particular node we could create history output for this node for example and then we could just go to history outputs and measure this but it's not really uh, necessary in this case we can easily uh, check it uh, manually uh, using the legend here or using the, the query tool and then we can obtain the uh, deflection for for this uh, beam for the for this uh, end of the beam so as you can see there is a very good agreement with the analytical solution and uh, now uh, let me just change one thing for the second run uh, so i won't uh, redefine the support or the boundary condition i just want to uh, change the uh, load sort of surface traction and in particular i just want to remove the uh, negative uh, so change the direction so basically the load will now act upwards i will uh, submit the analysis again and you will see what happens Okay, we have the new results, so let's open them. And now mm, you can see, of course, that the beam goes upwards. So if, if we uh, change the frame, we can see that the beam goes in the upward direction. And uh, as you can see, the deflection is different now uh, because uh, the spring-like elements here uh, don't provide any resistance uh, in this direction, in the tensile direction. So even though mm, they are similar to springs, uh, they don't act in this direction. So that's how the, the compression only support works. So you can see that uh, when we are uh, bending the beam in the opposite direction upwards, uh, Co is causing basically tension here so you can see that the flexion is different and if you compare it uh, with uh, the analytical solution uh, for the case when there's no spring uh, support so basically uh, like like removing the, the spring support or bending the beam in the other direction without the spring stiffness here you can see that we have uh, different uh, deflection and uh, if we compare it with the analytical solution uh, you can notice that mm, it's very uh, close to uh, what we are expecting here 
and uh, of course I can again use the query tool to uh, make sure that this location has this value that we are expecting so mm, that now we have a very good agreement with the .NET Go uh, solution uh, provided right here alright, uh, that's all for this Prepromax tutorial uh, thank you very much for your attention as always feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics of future tutorials in the comments have a nice day and see you in the next video